there are two types of fertilization, internal fertilization and external fertilization. For external fertilization, the female releases eggs into the environment where the male then fertilizes them. External fertilization usually occurs in aquatic environment to prevent gamete from drying out and to allow the sperm to swim to the eggs. Among some species, with external fertilization, individuals clustered in the same area release their gametes into water at the same time, a process known as spawning. Spawning process causes the egg and sperm to be placed in a small area, enhancing the possibility of fertilization. At the same time, a large number of gametes also need to be produced by male and female to ensure reproductive success. The release of the reproductive material may be triggered by temperature or the length of daylight. Many fish, amphibians and other sexual aquatic animals use external fertilization. For internal fertilization, sperm are deposited into the female reproductive tract and fertilization occurs within the tract. Even though fewer of string are produced through this method, but their survival rate is higher due to the protection of embryo and parental care. This method occurs in most mammals, birds, and a few reptiles. There are three types of embryo development, oviparity, ovoviviparity, and viviparity. In oviparity, the fertilized eggs are laid outside the body of the mother. The young depend on yolk for their nourishment. Some examples of oviparous are birds, amphibians, and reptiles. Some oviparous animals show parental care. For example, some birds make nests to protect their eggs, while penguins, they keep their egg on their feet and cover it with a fold of warm skin. Oviviparity is a mode of reproduction in animals in which embryos that develop inside an egg remain in the mother's body until they are ready to hatch. During development, the young depend on stored yolk for their nourishment. The eggs hatch inside the mother's body and the young are born after hatching from the eggs. Some examples of oviviparous animals are tiger shark, guppies, and Madagascar hissing cockroach. In viviparity, the development of the embryo within the mother's body. The embryo receives nutrients from the mother through a placenta. The offspring develops in the female's body and is born alive. This form of reproduction occurs in most mammals, some cartilaginous fish, such as lemon shark and a few reptiles. The majority of bony fish reproduce via external fertilization. The developing embryo is nourished by egg yolk. The presence of fertilized egg and developing young in the water provide opportunities for predation resulting in a loss of offspring. Therefore, millions of eggs must be produced by individuals. And the offspring produced through this method must mature rapidly. Unlike most bony fishes, cartilaginous fish reproduce using internal fertilization. Male cartilaginous fish have pair of external reproductive organ called clasper that are located between their pelvic fin, and female have cloaca and opening that serve digestive and reproductive function. The male use clasper to transfer sperm into the female's cloaca. Fertilization in amphibian is mostly external, for example, frog. During mating season, the male produce croaking sound to attract female. When female arrive, the male sits on the back of the female. This position is called amplexus. In this position, they release their gametes from cloaca into the water. Internal fertilization is mostly seen in reptiles and birds. Both reptiles and birds have an opening called a cloaca, a single exit and entrance for sperm, eggs and waste. The male brings his sperm to the female cloaca and the sperm fertilizes the egg. Then the hard shell egg develops within the female and eggs are usually laid in a nest. Birds' eggs are similar to reptile eggs, except they have harder outer shell. 
Fertilization in mammals occurs internally. Breeders can be seasonal or continuous. Certain mammals are called seasonal breeders since they can reproduce only during a certain period of time in the year, while some are called continuous breeders since they can reproduce throughout the year. The majority of mammals are placenta mammals, which is characterized by the presence of a placenta. Two types of cycles occur in female mammals. Humans and many other primates have the menstrual cycle. Other mammals have the estrous cycle. In estrous cycle, reabsorption of the endometrium occur if conception does not occur during that cycle, while animals that have menstrual cycle shed the endometrium through menstruation. For estrous cycle, females only sexually active during the estrous phase of their cycle. Females of species with menstrual cycle can be sexually active at any time in their cycle, even when they are not about to ovulate. A few examples, such as elephants and dogs, do have an estrous cycle. Examples of menstruating animals are apes and humans. Mammals can be divided into three groups, which are monotremes, marsupials, and ichorians. Monotremes are the only oviparous mammal. The female lay eggs that they carry in a pouch on the abdomen or keep warm in a nest. Like all mammals, monotremes have hair and produce milk, but they lack nipples. When the young hatch, they are nourished by milk produced by the mother's mammary gland. Female monotremes secret milk through pores on the surface of the abdomen. Examples of monotremes are platypus and spiny anteater. Marsupial mammals are viviparous mammals. Marsupials give birth to the tiny and underdeveloped young. Female marsupials have a pouch on their bellies which they can zip and unzip by using a special muscle. Without any parental help, the immature babies then grow up into a pouch where they nurse on their mother's milk and remain in the pouch until they complete their development. The most common marsupials are kangaroos and koalas. Ichorians are viviparous, meaning that the offspring are carried in the mother's uterus until fully developed. The Ichorians are commonly called placenta mammals, since it is characterized by development of placenta, and the embryo are nourished through a placenta. Blood vessels of the embryo come very close to the blood vessel of the mother, so materials can be exchanged by diffusion. The placenta allow the embryo to develop for a long time inside the mother, and born at a more mature stage than marsupial. Mm -hmm.